Hey everyone, what's shaking? My name's Maxwell Murphy, and today I'm gonna be walking you through how to program a test profile from a customer specification, and then we're gonna simulate it on our VR4600. So I'm running Vibration View 2024 right now. 2025 just launched about a month ago, uh, so definitely check that out when you can. Okay, let's go ahead and jump right in. I've got my customer specification over here on the right. I'm just kind of walking through it. It's a random vibration test. And let's just start from the top here. So I'm supposed to perform a random vibration profile on the device under test, DUT. Uh, see the breakpoint table below. Perfect. Uh, this also tells me that it's a random vibration profile based on the units, G squared per hertz. Uh, my goal is to use two controlled accelerometers and place them per the supplied figure. Uh, so I've got a control two and control one, uh, respectively. And then I'm, my control strategy is averaging. So I'm going to average the individual control channels to provide my control signal. And I need to control that to within plus or minus three dB of the demand. The individual controlled signals may deviate from the demand by plus or minus 6 dB, so it gives me a little bit of grace. That's really nice. And then I'm going to use one triaxial response accelerometer and place it on the device under test per the supplied figure. And my goal is to annotate, or a sub goal of that is to annotate the highest resonance peak on the response accelerometer. And so now I'm going to shake the DUT per the profile for 30 seconds at minus 3 dB, so half power, and then I'm going to ramp up to full level for 10 seconds. All right, so we are ready to start programming the test. So I'm going to go up here to edit test because I've already got a random vibe profile opened up. And I'm going to open this up. So when I edit test, uh, it opens up my breakpoint table initially. Now, I've got a couple ways I can approach this. I can either uh, type it in manually, uh, and it'll just, you know, I'll, I'll program it accordingly. Or what I could do is over here in this PDF, uh, I can highlight the text. So this could be Excel or, you know, PDF, just anywhere I can grab the text. And then I'm going to hit, right, I'm going to right click on my mouse. I'm going to copy it here. And then hit, I'm gonna right click again and paste it from the table. And this is gonna ask me, hey, this will replace all segments in this table, are you sure? Absolutely, I'm sure. So now I have all my frequency values, all my amplitude values. And this is a really good shortcut for whenever you have dozens and dozens of uh, breakpoint values or uh, you know frequencies and, and amplitudes. And my tolerances are plus or minus 3 dB uh, of the demand. Terrific. My abort limits uh, make them out to 6. That's fine. Um, so now I've got all of my profile built here. And this is a really a classic one. Um, now how long do I need to shake it for? Well, according to my specification, I'm going to shake the device under test, the DUT, uh, at 30 seconds at minus 3 dB, and then I'm going to ramp to full level for 10 seconds. So run at, um, run for 30 seconds minus 3 dB. And I want to kind of showcase one uh, really great thing about uh, vibration view. So let's say, I think by default, this is one hour. All right, so I'll just hit it there. Uh, I can either, you know, type this in manually. Uh, to be 30 seconds, or if I really wanted to, I could just type in here 30 and then S for seconds. So that's a, just a neat little shortcut there. If I wanted to do 30 minutes, I could do 30 M for minutes, and you guessed it, you could do 30 H for hours. But remember, our specification only calls for 30 seconds at minus 3 dB. All right, and then I've already added another step for 10 seconds at zero dB, which is 100% power. Uh, finally, my parameters tab, I've got averaging of 120 degrees of freedom, and we're gonna turn off instant degrees of freedom for now. 
And all of this is pretty automatic. There's really no need to, to adjust any of this unless your test calls for it. Um, starting uh, startup drive limits, the running drive limits, uh, pretty standard. Uh, if you have any questions about this, you can just call us um, at um, you can just call us at, at Vibration Research. Uh, we've got the pretest tab and the channels tab. Here's what I'm really interested in. So our control uh, control strategy is two controlled accelerometers or two accelerometers, and we're going to be averaging the selected channels. So channel one and channel two, uh, that's what I've designated as my control channels, and uh, yeah, then we'll, we'll average them and we'll keep on moving. Um, this is all kind of default. I'm not going to go into detail here. Uh, we've got you know tables and and calculations and so forth. All right, so I think we're ready to run. I'll just hit apply, make sure the changes went through. And now I'm ready to start the test. All right, so now let's go ahead and run the test. So I'm gonna hit start up here. And it looks like, oh yeah, yeah, it's asking me about keeping IDOF turned off. Yeah, we're just gonna leave it off for now. And we'll kind of touch on that here in a minute. All right, so up above immediately, you can see my control signal, but through experience, it's always super important to monitor your individual control channels as well as the averaged control. This is because if one of my control accelerometers falls off the shaker, uh, the controller is going to automatically uh, do whatever it has to to ensure that the averaging of those two control values are maintained within the control um, band. All right, so immediately at, down here at the bottom, you'll notice we just ramped up to zero dB, and we're going to run that for 10 seconds. And my channel five looks like it's really dragging down there. Ah, so let me go ahead and just stop this test. So you'll notice over here on the right, I've got a visual indicator that my channel five accelerometer is not turned on. So let me go over here to configuration. I'm going to select inputs and then I'm going to turn on my channel five uh, accelerometer. Now that's assuming that these are voltage accelerometers. This doesn't really um, do anything for charge accelerometers. All right. So my channel five accelerometer is on. And I think because we're in demonstration mode, which we know that based on uh, this network card that we've selected. Because we're in demonstration mode, um, I don't believe uh, channel five actually gives us any any values. So let's go ahead and just rerun it. I'll just start over, that's fine. So this is gonna be a 40 second test-ish. Yeah, so channel five doesn't actually you know add any value there, and that's all right. That doesn't stop us from our test. Great, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, just skip to the end here. All right, we're about to hit 30 seconds at minus 3 dB. Now it's going to ramp up to 0 dB. And then we'll let it run for about 10 seconds. I... All right, so the test just finished. And you'll notice on my control graph, I've got some values. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here. I've got some control values that are actually slightly out. So anyone who doesn't understand signal analysis is automatically going to see that and say, well, you know, that uh, obviously your, your test didn't pass. So I'm going to uncheck these uh, control signals just so I can kind of inspect here. All right, and I'm going to auto scale it. All right, great. So obvious um, out of tolerance conditions. So immediately you might think, well, that's that's a no pass. But 10 seconds with a heavy payload is really difficult to get in tolerance that quickly. So the real goal here should be to identify any potential resonance frequencies that could cause catastrophic failures in the field. And we can get around that by adding uh, instant degrees of freedom or IDOF. This is a really great feature that Vibration Research launched um, a few iterations ago of Vibration View. So I'm going to turn on IDOF 
and I'm actually going to rerun the test. All right, so control signal is coming online. And you might think, well, that's just magic. And it's it's not. It's just statistical analysis. Uh, what IDOF does is it scans for potential resonance frequencies. And um, it immediately reveals that information to the operator. So in this case, there are no resonance frequencies for the uh, control signals or for the averaging of the control signals, I should say. So I'll go ahead and show control one and control two. And immediately you can see, okay, there's a little bit of funky stuff going on here around uh, 530 hertz, 535, yeah. All right, so great. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off channel one and channel two. Again, just to, just to inspect the control signal. And now it looks like it passes. And, and really the goal here is to introduce the payload to the vibration profile and ensure that nothing on your payload, on your device under test, breaks. So that should always be the goal in, in every vibration test that you do. All right, so now it's time to print off a report. So I'm going to open up my data by selecting the Open Data tab. I'm going to find my data save file here. Just going to double click it. It's going to open. And I'm going to kind of just review everything real fast. And yeah, it looks like stuff is a little bit bunched up here, down here at the bottom. That's really not a big deal. So I can go in here to edit graph. So your graph one is going to be targeting this graph here. Graph two will be the second graph, and you guessed it, graph three is gonna be this text window down here, and I know it's a text window because that's what's selected. So I can change my font size. I'll just change it to 10, that's fine. So now everything should kind of cinch up a little bit there. Yeah, yeah, that's all right. So let me just make it just a hair smaller, all right? And I can easily, you know, change some values, some params is what we call them. Uh, if I really wanted to. And I think part of my goal with that test was to annotate the highest resonance peak. All right, so now I've got to annotate my resonance peak. So I'll just click on channel three and hit the insert key. Perfect, so there's my channel three. And then I'll hit insert again, and that's going to be for all of them. I don't necessarily want that. I just want channel four. So I'm going to highlight channel four and hit insert. And perfect. So now I've got my resonance peaks annotated. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make this full screen. All right. And now uh, I'm ready to generate a report. All right. So I'll go ahead and, and I guess before I actually generate my report, I do want to touch on this just a little bit. These reports that we print off, they can be easily customized to whatever your needs are. Uh, just to show you what they look like, uh, this is a test report. It's just called test report. That's just the default name. But this tells you exactly what will be displayed here. So your test graphs, and this is kind of like the... Uh, the default text, and I'll, I'll kind of show you that in a second. But we can show the codes. This is actually really cool. So we can show the doc variable run name, doc variable note one, note two, note three. Uh, this gives us the graph and any resonances that are available. And we can really just tailor this document to whatever we need. So maybe you have uh, three or four pages and you need to show channel one on its own and channel two and maybe you have you know uh, 20 channels that each need their own plot a piece of cake so very very easy to do so thankfully uh, vibration research has really streamlined this process to make it as easy as possible for all of you guys all right so I'm gonna close out of this test report template and click back in here to my data file. 
and then I'm gonna hit report. So just left click report. And this is the default, just test report. All right, so it looks great. And this gives me uh, a picture of what it is, my breakpoint table. So this gives me my evidence here, right? The actual um, profile here too, the breakpoint table, yeah, yeah. Uh, test schedule, when was this tested? Um, got all of my channels and my GRMS values. Yeah, so I've seen some engineers that like to have this information uh, just to give them the energy um, you know, per, per channel. And in any additional test notes that you know, we wanna make note of, we can. Yeah, so this is really great. Oh yeah, and the last little bit I'll, I'll touch on. Uh, for for those of you who really need to keep track of you know accelerometer channels, serial numbers, calibration dates, etc., uh, those values will also be generated over here. So that way, it's easy for your um, quality department, your uh, quality assurance folks, to just quickly view. You know, was all of the tooling in Cal? Yes, good, green, we're good. All right, and then you can just print that to wherever you want, you know, save as a PDF. You can save it on your network server, so that way you have a digital file of it, and any of your engineering or program management can view it, or, or you can, of course, email it to your, to your clients. All right, before we wrap up this video, I did want to share this with you. Uh, so we've got the upgrades and support agreement that we do with all of our clients. Um, this really helps you guys be as productive as possible. So when it comes to calibration, for example, um, we don't want you guys to be um, out of service for even a minute, for even a day, right? So what we will do is we will send you loaners so that you can continue shaken while your device gets calibrated. So that's one uh, great benefit of this premium uh agreement that we do. Uh, just a, a couple other um, nuances here between the basic and premium. With the premium package, we'll also give you the analyzer functions. The live analyzer is also included in both of them. Uh, the instant degrees of freedom, like I touched on, uh, IDOF is a must-have tool, especially for those uh, very short duration vibration profiles. And then finally, uh, we have the math traces and calculator and of course, you know, you can use your web and email to monitor and send notifications. So I just wanted to touch on that. Okay, so that's it for this video. Uh, just to kind of summarize what we did, we took a customer specification, we programmed our vibration controller, and we also utilized IDOF, which of course stands for Instant Degrees of Freedom, to help us pass the test and ensure that we are not going to uh, introduce any kind of catastrophic failures to our product under test. So if you like this video, be sure to let us know, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.